All right, here we are with another quiz question from section 4.1 that was giving people trouble, so let's have a look at it together and see if we can see what the issues might be. You may occasionally hear reports on the news about the cost per barrel for crude oil. This is the product that is refined into gasoline we use in our cars. It's natural to wonder about the relationship between the price of crude oil and the price of gasoline. The chart below shows a sample of six days where the price of oil in dollars per barrel and the national average in the U.S. for regular unleaded gasoline in dollars per gallon are recorded. And the data is based on info from gasbuddy.com from 2010 and 2011. They give us the data set here. They also give us a scatter plot, and then they give us a prediction equation that is used to model the data. And they ask us to calculate the squared error E squared for an oil price of $87 per barrel, and they want us to round that to four decimal places. So first of all, to not give anything away on the quiz and just make this an example instead of an answer for you, I'm going to change that to $90 a barrel, and we'll do the question in that format. So they want E squared. So how do we get that? Well, E is Y minus Y hat. So E squared is Y minus Y hat squared. So we need to figure out the Y and the Y hat, plug them in, round to four decimal places. That's going to be our answer. So first of all, when they give you an X value like the 90 or when they give you that 90, because that's $90 per barrel for oil, we can go back up here and see that oil is the X value. So they gave us an X of 90, and the chart tells us that the Y value that goes with that is 3.01. So just kind of doing some information gathering, we can see from that chart that Y that goes with an X of 90 is 3.01. So now that we still need the Y hat, Y hat values come from the prediction equation right here. And so we just need to plug that X value of 90 into that equation. So if we do that, taking that equation and that X value together, we get Y hat is 0 0.235 plus 0 0.03217 times x, and the x value here is 90. So what we want to do now is plug that into our calculator and round that to four decimal places. So switching over to the graphing calculator, we just want to plug that in. So we have 0 0.235 plus 0 0.03217 times 90. And that's going to give us our y hat value. So 3.1303. So 3.1303. And I actually sort of going to round that to four de decimal places. We're going to round our answer to four decimal places. And we're not at our answer yet. But we have all the pieces assembled. We've got the value of y, we've got the value now of y hat, and we're going to plug those in. So e squared is y, 3.01, minus y hat, 3.1303, all squared. And that was going to be our answer, so that's the one we're going to round to three decimal places. So jumping back over to the calculator real quick, we take open parentheses, we put in the y value 3.01, we subtract the y hat value 3.1303, we end the parentheses, and then we square that. So we get 0, 0144 for our first four decimals, but we need to look at the fifth decimal place, which is a 7, and because that's bigger than a 5, we're going to round up. And so instead of 0 0.0144, we'll put 0 0.0145. So point zero point zero one four five. So that is going to be our answer right there. So that is what's going to go in this box right here. When you do four decimal places, you are, by the way, counting all decimal places. 
are all digits after the decimal, so that zero right there does count as one of your decimal places, so keep that in mind. Some places that I can see where perhaps this would go wrong, even if you knew what you were doing in terms of the overall philosophy, is uh, maybe rounding your value for uh, y hat, so don't do that, keep the full value. Uh, maybe forgetting to put parentheses in the calculator when you do the square part, so make sure that you remember to do those parentheses right there and make sure that they're closed before you put the square on it. Making sure we round that last digit right there up if necessary by looking at the fifth digit when we're rounding to four. So those are some places where it could go wrong. Here's a look at an overall version of doing it right. I hope you find that helpful and I hope you jump back in there and give the quiz another try.